Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another natural resource economic struggle. Today I'm talking about non-renewable resources, mainly the first order conditions and how to rate the Lagrangian. So that's what I'm going to do today. As usual, timestamps are below if you would like to jump around to any of these goals and outcomes. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And so the way we're going to jump into it is we're going to start talking about this running example, which of course is going to involve Bill. So we're going to say that Bill has some water in this bucket and Bill has seven days before it's going to rain again and he's got to figure out how much water he's got to take out every day to drink. And so we're going to say that Bill's utility is going to be the square root of how much water he drinks on any given day. We're going to say, I don't know, when he starts the week, the bucket is at some level of water. We'll just call it L0. We're going to say that Bill discounts the future with some discount factor beta. So what we want to do is we want to set up Bill's problem for these seven days. We want to characterize the solution to Bill's problem. So that's what we want to do, and let's start working on it. And again, this video is going to talk about a lot of things that I talked about in my videos on Lagrangian optimization. So if you haven't checked those out, those are the first couple of videos in this series. It's going to really help you for when you come back to this video. So here we go. Here's our setup. I'm just going to make a little bit of notation. So my first notation is that I'm going to call the water that we consume on day T, W, T. We know that the utility function is the square root of water consumed, so that's the square root of W, T. We got some level of water in the bucket on any day T, and we know that basically whatever level I have in a bucket on any given day, it's just whatever level I had yesterday minus whatever amount of water I took out yesterday. So now let's just write the Lagrangian. So I'm just gonna say this is the maximum. Well, I get to choose how much water I take out today, and I sort of also get to choose how much water is in the bucket today based on my choice yesterday. So I'll just throw that in. That's sort of like a state variable. This is gonna go from zero to six. The reason it's gonna go from zero to six is because we go how many days from today and it's zero days from today which is day one all the way until six days from today which is day seven on each day what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a beta to the t times my utility function which is the square root of wt i'm also going to have a lambda or a lagrange multiplier for every day and the lagrange multipliers i'm against my constraint which is the level of water in the bucket so this is just going to be lt minus lt minus one plus w t minus one. That's for every day. And so what I need to do to make this a full Lagrangian, and then what I'm gonna do is I need to sum this up from t equals zero until t equals six. So now that I have this, a couple other things. Notice that this is a flow budget constraint instead of a stock constraint. Talk about that in a separate video. But now I'm all ready to characterize the solutions and we know by now that the way we're gonna characterize solutions so we're going to take the first order conditions and interpret them. So first, let's take this first order condition with respect to WT. And so what you can see is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to have beta to the T times the derivative of this guy, which is 1 half WT to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 times the square root of WT. Now notice that if I want to get this WT minus 1, in the next period, so in period T plus 1, I'm going to have LT plus 1 minus LT plus WT. And so it's going to have the Lagrangian for tomorrow. That's going to be equal to zero. And then if I scroll down a little bit, I'm just going to sort of rearrange this fraction. What you're going to see is I'm going to get that beta times lambda t plus one star is negative one over two times the square root of wt. And again, that's the math. But let's talk about what it means. What the math means is that this right here is the shadow price of wealth for tomorrow, or basically this is how much I'd be willing to pay to have a little extra water in the tank when I wake up tomorrow. And so because that's about tomorrow, I need to make that into present value. And I do that by multiplying it by beta. And so this is the cost of taking out water today. And the reason it's a cost is because the value of taking out that water today is basically how much I would be willing to pay to have that extra water be in the tank when I wake up tomorrow. So that's what lambda t plus one represents. The beta makes that a present value. Now on the other side, what I've got is I've got the benefit to me of taking out that water. The benefit to me of taking out that water is simply the marginal utility of that water. And so without the negative sign, this is the marginal utility of water. Now the reason I'm putting a negative sign in front is because if this is a cost and this is a benefit, if I want them to be equal, I've got to put a negative somewhere so that they're both sort of in terms of costs or both sort of in terms of benefits. But you can see again, what we're getting is that marginal benefit equals marginal cost at the optimum. On the other side of that, we can also take the first order condition with respect to the level of water in the tank. 
What we're going to get is that the shadow prices should be equal to each other in every period. The only difference should be the fact that this shadow price happens in the future, so I discount it by beta. And so other than the times being different, the shadow prices need to be exactly equal. So the reason this makes sense is that the amount that I should be willing to pay to have more water in the tank tomorrow shouldn't change based on what day it is. It should always be constant. I should always be just as willing to pay for more water tomorrow as I was yesterday. Because if that wasn't true, that would mean that water is more precious to me in one period than another, and so I should change how I'm consuming water to spread that out better. And so these shadow prices being equal basically means that I'm optimally smoothing my consumption of water over the seven days. So that's why it makes sense that at the optimum, lambda t should just be equal to beta times lambda t plus one. So again, that's how we would characterize the solution. This is as far as we have to go. We're not trying to find the solution. We're just characterizing, and we've interpreted the first order conditions. So if this is confusing, please leave a comment below. If this is helpful, please also leave a comment. And if these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.